So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I like to start by making an announcement. Uh, this title, "Small Molecule for a Big Medicine," was inspired from a monograph um, written by a famous uh, American scientist, and he did have a very illuminating, uh, illuminating scientific accomplishment, which to me was very much instrumental to the work you're going to see today. And this morning, he was awarded the Wolf Prize in Chemistry. So if a TED lecture can be dedicated to somebody, it will be for him. So a few years ago, four years ago exactly, I uh, joined the CNRS with a very strong interest in cancer and aging. And it is fair to say that 15 years ago, starting 15 years ago, we witnessed a, the absolute start of a scientific revolution that is genome medicine. We know more about our patient today than ever before. And we are now in a good position to um, answer questions that have been pr so pressing for so many years. Why do we have cancer and why do we age? So you might know that uh, the human genome contains uh, 26,000 genes and that those genes um, expressed or encode for about 150,000 proteins. And those proteins generate, at one point in time, millions of interactions within cells, each of which uh, contributes to uh, life. And um, all these uh, molecular interactions can be sites of chemical interactions to manipulate cellular processes and to uh, cure disease. So you might know that um, there is one thing that links a little bit uh, cancer and aging, which is uh, our genome. So our genome is localized within the nucleus, right? And uh, throughout life, our genome is going to accumulate uh, genomic mutations and genomic defects contributing to cancer and aging. Simply because our cells move and they are exposed to physical stress, but also to uh, small molecules or uh, chemicals that are toxic uh, to the genome and light. And there is a series of uh, proteins you can see here, uh, lamin A and lamin C which encapsulate our genome and to some extent protect our genome from this uh, st uh, stress. However, in some cancers and uh, in normal aging and premature aging, these lamines are either no longer expressed or they are subjected to mutations which are leading to a loss of protein fragment, making this mutated protein not uh, effective anymore. And one example of this uh, genetic defect is what we call the hutchinson guilford progaria syndrome, or premature aging. And here you will see uh, misfolded nucleus that correspond to the nucleus you will see here or here. So this is just one single mutation. Throughout the genome, one letter, one cytosine, is being replaced by thymidine. And this mutation produces this uh, pathology. And this pathology is, is, um, is terrible because the average lifespan is 13 years. Uh, the life expectancy is 20 years. But the worst part is the fact that these children uh, die of heart failure in uh, excruciating pain. And this is, uh, this is the very uh, poor aspect of this uh, pathology. So we have known this mutation for about 10 years. And yet there is no cure and there is no treatment uh, for this disease. And you might rightly ask, why is that? And the very uh, unsatisfying uh, and yet scientifically correct answer is that it's too hard. It's too hard because it's not possible at this point in time to use a small molecule or a drug to correct a genetic mutation. So we did ask ourselves this question. Is it possible to chemically suppress this genetic defect? Not to uh, correct the genetic mutation per se, but to rescue or correct uh, physiological consequences of uh, this mutation. So what is chemistry? So chemistry is the science of making molecules. And to my taste, it is the science of making and breaking chemical bonds between atoms so that you can reach these structures. And what is very interesting to me, beyond the fact that some of these structures are aesthetically pretty, is that um, there is more molecules or structures that one can design in his brain than you can find atoms in the universe. So it is ba basically infinite. And one can think that in 2050, we'll be able to use a small molecule to control every single uh, process of every single protein. 
And just to give you a flavor of it, I have taken some examples from the literature and some examples from our group. You see the natural product here, marmycin, for example, this small molecule does accumulate in the lysosome, which are the bean bag of cells, and this is where uh, cells recycle uh, biomolecules uh, to um, recover some building blocks, right? And these compounds accumulate in the lysosome and thereby kill cancer cells. This natural product, salinomycin, is another natural product that kills uh, some particular population of cancer cells that are typically refractory to normal uh, chemotherapeutic agent, which uh, causes uh, metastasis and cancer relapse. This one, periplanon B, here is a very famous pheromone. This one, this natural product, thiosreptone, is inhibiting a transcription factor cancer cells became addicted with. So if you inhibit this transcription factor, you rescue normal prolifer proliferation rate, and thereby you can treat uh, cancer in some way. Rapamycin here. Uh, rapamycin is a very potent uh, immunosuppressant, and some analogs of this uh, natural product are being used in the clinic for organ transplant. Finally, this compound, pyrilostatin, is a drug that uh, does target a very rare form of uh, nucleic acid, DNA, uh, that is a non-Watson-Crick structure, thereby creating DNA lesions so that you can kill uh, cancer cells. Um, so please do consider this work in progress. Okay, but today we'd like to talk to you about uh, this genetic defect, a human protein that was previously unexplored for which we have discovered a new function, and this small molecule remodeling that was discovered in our group four years ago. So four years ago, our three colleagues, three dear friends of mine based in Cambridge, UK, and myself at the CNRS, we came up with this idea, a rationale, that was the following. Is it possible to use this aberrant nuclear shape, okay, the nuclear shape of uh, prokaryotic cells, and screen for small molecules, to identify a small molecules that could rescue a normal nuclear shape, independently of the genetic mutation. And if we could identify this small molecule, maybe we could use this small molecule also to correct a cellular defect, defect of cellular aging. So to cut a long story short, okay, to um, pass on the very tedious uh, process of uh, synthesizing small molecule and screening, we identified this small molecule remodeling, which exhibited very remarkable um, properties, not only uh, the one to rescue a normal nuclear shape here, Okay, but also the ability to decrease endogenous levels of DNA damage. So the green spot that you see here represents DNA lesions, and when you treat this cell population with remodeling, 24 hours later, you go back almost to a normal level of endogenous DNA damage. So there is a chemical way to uh, rejuvenate aging cells. So here I'm showing you pictures, so you have to believe me. Okay, so we made a movie. It is not Star Wars, but we are getting close to this. So here what you see is a dish, okay, where you see cell nuclei here, in, in gray or in white, whatever, and you can see that most of them are misfolded. Okay? So you should pay attention to this particular cell. These are not two cells, it is actually one very uh, misfolded cell nucleus, and you will see what happens after one night of treatment. So 24 hours later, we cannot identify a single uh, cell showing signs of a misfolded nucleus or sign of associated uh, defect. So this is the 21st century. Okay, and uh, in the 21st century, it's not possible to use a compound in the clinic if you don't know how it works. So we had to be smart. And we had to identify the protein target of this small molecule through which this small molecule exerts its activity. So you have to see cells as a massive ocean filled with molecules, whether they are proteins, nucleic acids, sugars, or lipids. And what you have to do is go fishing. So what you see here is a boat with my friend, Delphine, based in Cambridge. And uh, the fishing rod that you see here is a molecular fishing rod that was designed and developed in my group at the CNRS, and what you see here, the hook, is remodeling. So what we did is very simply going fishing. And we did identify this protein, the N-terminal acetyltransferase natan. But is, this is not good enough. Sometimes when you go fishing, you go fishing for a trout, you end up fishing uh, salmon, okay, and the reason is there are more salmon in your river than you can find trout. So we had to validate that this protein target really is a target 
within the context of cells that are structurally intact. And so we had to develop uh, chemical strategies that allow one to visually detect small molecules in cells. Most drugs and small molecules are invisible to the naked eye. So we developed a chemistry that allow us to see remodeling in green. And here you will see the protein target not in here in red. You will see our drug remodeling in green. And once you merge these two pictures, you overlap one on top of each other, you will see the yellow pattern here. And of course, as you know, the yellow pattern is a mixture of green and red, which defines the physical proximity between the red and the green within cells defining a molecular interaction between the drug and its protein target. So this got us very interested, very excited actually. But this was not even good enough. So what is the physiological consequence of uh, this inhibition? And later we discovered that natan is involved in the metabolism and the processing, in fact, of uh, little molecular <coughs> ropes that we call microtubules. And in normal condition, microtubules are pulling the nucleus apart in cells to make sure that the nucleus is uh, tied up and doesn't move within cells. So the nucleus in cells is not moving around, okay? It's just being very stable. And in normal conditions, you do have functional lamines, okay? So if microtubules are pulling the nucleus apart, nothing happens. However, if you have mutated lamines or if you lose the lamines, microtubules are pulling the nucleus apart, pulling the DNA apart. And if you have a DNA lesion, these lesions are being opened up and cells cannot tie it back together. And so throughout aging or throughout cancer, you do accumulate DNA lesions, you do accumulate mutations, and you age prematurely. So what we found, in fact, is if you use remodeling, you inhibit natan protein, you decrease the physical forces of microtubules that are imposed on the nucleus, thereby rescuing a normal nuclear shape and decreasing endogenous level of DNA damage. So we could have kept it a secret. Okay, a secret so that we would have more time to convert this prototype drug into a clinically approved drug. But in the spirit of these uh, lecture seminars, the idea was to spread the word. Okay, so what we did was to publish the work, to make our finding available to everybody throughout the world. We gave the people our email address so that they could email us and we could ship the compound to them, which happened. So this compound was shipped to New York, USA, London, UK, Paris, Singapore, and so forth and so on. We gave the molecular identity of the compound and we even told the people how to make the compound so that people equipped with the lab could make the drug and study the effect of the drug within the experimental setup, which allowed pharma company or chemical companies to manufacture the compound and to sell it for a very moderate price so that everybody on the planet can access the drug and perform similar experiments in different settings for different types of pathologies linked to the same genetic defect, which is a mutation within the lamine. So this is 2014. So I'll show you where we are now, two years later. So you guys are probably familiar with the famous novel from Scott Fitzgerald, okay, or perhaps the David Fincher movie. So we had mice that age uh, prematurely in a way that is reminiscent of um, the molecular processes of normal human aging or human premature aging. So the curve that you see here, the line, the dashed black line here, define wild type, meaning normal mice. And after day 150, as you can see, these mice they are not dying because the life expectancy of normal mice goes beyond 150 days. And what you see here in blue is um, Progeria mice, or mice showing signs of premature aging. And the average lifespan is about 80 days. And what we found here is that when you feed these mice with the orally available uh, remodeling compound, after 120 days, mice were still alive. So in fact, we had a 30% increase in life expectancy for these mice aging prematurely. But this is not the big part. The big part is that not only they age longer, but they did age better. And what is difficult with progeria is that these uh, children, they are dying in pain. So here you can see that mice, they not only they age longer, but they do age uh, a lot better. So I will leave you with uh, this idea that we could do this work because we are part of an academic network and as part as a collaborative network, it was very easy for us to get together to challenge our ideas. And academia offers this um, canvas where people can think freely, 
challenge their ideas, share their ideas, and um, you can really appreciate the flexibility of time and independent thinking. So we always say that time you cannot catch and time you cannot see, but there might be a way to uh, harness some time using uh, small molecules. And finally, I will leave you with this idea that this work is, has been made possible because of you. And so I would like to um, thank you very much for your participation, for your contribution, and for your confidence in our ideas. Thank you very much. <laughs>